Hey guys, welcome back Ox Tools. I'm Tom. Um, I'm on uh, holiday break right now and I've been playing around in the shop. Anyway, um, I decided that, uh, you know, I get enough questions about uh, machine maintenance and lubricants and oils and things like that that I thought I would do a uh, quote unquote shop maintenance video. Um, it's time for me to do some of these things myself. Uh, in fact, I'm way overdue uh, for some of them anyway. And we'll just go through and some of the things that you should be doing on a regular basis uh, with your machine tools and your shop in general. So, you know, one of the things that happens to me sometimes is I come down here and I'm like, eh, you know, I got 20 things I, that I should be working on and I'm not in the mood to work on any of those. And uh, so my motto to myself is just start. Okay, and a lot of times what I'll do is I'll start with shop maintenance items, right? Uh, I'll do some cleanup, I'll clean out the chip pan, I'll oil some things, and you know, and it kind of kind of gets you going in the shop, right? And really, you should be doing these things regularly to take care of your machine tools and uh, keep them operating at their best. So uh, what I thought I did, we'll just shoot a little video and uh, show you some of the things that I do. Um, as machine tool and shop maintenance items. So uh, let's get cracking. We're going to start with the mill and uh, we'll, we'll start with the mill. Let's go. Alright, so I gave it just a kind of a quick blow down over the top and wipe down uh, to knock all the chips and stuff off. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull the vise and I'm going to tram the head, clean underneath the vise and uh, make sure there's no corrosion and nothing uh, icky going on underneath there. So uh, pull the trays up and you can see you know coolant and chips and stuff still even get under these uh, these, these covers. So uh, you know it's a good idea to sneak around underneath there every once in a while and see what's, see what's going on, right? Pull your vices off and uh, in particular if you're using flood coolant um, you know, water and uh, stuff can creep underneath there and uh, and cause trouble. Okay. All right. Um, this thing weighs a ton. I got, I'm old now. I gotta lower this down. There was a time I could probably carry two of these with uh, one in each hand, but not anymore. All right. So I'm just gonna set this over here. Out of my way, we'll do that kind of separately. And you can see there's some staining under here, um, but I usually put a little something underneath there so uh, um, it looks like it's just wiping right off. So, uh, all right, let's uh, use the chip brush first, push everything down to one end, and then uh, we can get it out of there with a the vacuum or something. Yeah, okay, so that's looking pretty good. And then, you know, we're gonna, um, we'll stone the table um, for burrs and stuff like that. We'll just do the whole thing. Let me get this stuff out of here. You guys don't need to see me vacuuming that. Then we'll wipe this down, we'll stone it, and then uh, uh, re-lubricate, well, actually we'll tram and then re-lubricate and uh, reinstall the vise. So, I'm just gonna put a spritz a little bit of uh, WD-40. Um, and this is mainly, it's just, I'm using it as a solvent here uh, to take off any, uh, any residues and things like that that are on here. You know, and you see you get some stuff off of there. And, uh, you know, any that you leave behind uh, has some minor corrosion inhibiting uh, qualities. Okay. So now what I'm going to do is I'll go ahead and stone this surface here and I'm just going to use this is a little small Norton uh, India stone here um, and I think I mentioned this before is I lap these real flat and, um, and we're just going to go around and I'm not putting a lot of pressure here I'm just looking for stuff like that. and little nicks in the edges that, that cause your work to not uh, not sit on there properly. 
And I'm not trying to create a pattern with this. I'm just looking for, for stuff that's sticking up. Like <laughs> these rubber things down here. Alright, that looks pretty good. There's a couple little little things here. You know, maybe I'll zoom in on those and you guys can get a look at uh, what it looks like when you uh, when you when you find a little uh, a little bump there. So uh, let me do that. Okay. So the the two things I was looking at were this little guy right here and um, that little guy right there. Um, so when the stone went let's see, can you see that one? Yeah, you can see that one. So when the stone went over those, you know, they're a little, it's a little pucker. It's an upsticker, right? So it's kind of like a little volcano, and you, you kind of knock off the, uh, um, the vertical part of the volcano and bring it down to the flatland there. So uh, you can kind of see how that looks there. So those are the little things that you're looking for uh, to get rid of there um, when, you, when you go over with a stone. But, you know, you're not really trying to clean with the stone or uh, take out any uh, uh, any low spots or create any low spots. Alright, so we're kind of in position for tramming here. Um, I like to use uh, these back plunge, uh, stare at back plunge indicators for this. Um, they have this nice rounded button that, that glides over these uh, T-slot holes really well. And, you know, this is just a, a pointer and you use the, the stock steric clamp and it's got a little V in it and you know it just clamps on there just you know easy as pie right okay um, and you know you can get a pretty big radius and then you can easily change it uh, when you switch axes uh, to a smaller radius okay um, so it's just a you know I find it a convenient uh, um, style to use uh, for this operation and you know, when you think about it, uh, you know, this has a one thousandth, re one thousandth of an inch resolution. You know, out at that radius, that's uh, that's pretty good. Um, so we'll do an initial. Um, you know what? I'm just going to extend the quill, and um, we'll run the cable up and uh, see what we got. And. That give me a little bit of preload there, and you guys probably want to see this indicator. But uh, let me just do a quick, uh, a quick uh, bozo sweep here, and and you know see what uh, see what we got here. And it's even got a convenient handle on it. Okay, so it's actually. Uh, it's actually pretty, you know what, I'm not even going to move it. Um, let me uh, spin back over here and we'll take a look. Yeah, it's it's PFC, okay? Uh, PFC or RCH or whatever you want to call it. Um, yeah. Um, so what we'll do, I'm going to move to the center now, okay? And then I'm going to check the, uh, the other axe the Y axis here, and uh, you need a, a different radius for that. So you see, I can just beep up and uh, and change that real quick, like so. You know, you don't always you don't always end up changing anything here. It's just something that you need to monitor. Um, if you do a lot of heavy milling, uh, things like that, um, you need to. Uh, yeah, I'm I'm good. So. Uh, if you do a lot of heavy milling or you, you bump something or something jumps out of the vise on you or whatever, then you should really check your, uh, your tram. Now let's run it all the way up and we're going to do the same thing. Come up a little closer here. We're going to go up all the way. Yeah, that'll be good. I'll just drop the quill a little bit. Check it with the quill in, in a couple of positions. And you see that just slides right over those. Uh, yeah, I'm good. All right, let me uh, extend out again, out to the max. And I have some really long bars that I used to use, but 
they'll uh, drive you to tears sometimes. Okay. So and then we'll check another position here. We'll just come forward. Actually, let's come all the way forward like that. We'll come down. Check right there. Okay. And I'm using the knee to, to bring up the indicator. Okay, that looks pretty good. Yeah. Okay. Maybe, let's see, what is it? Half a thumb? Yeah, it's maybe half a thou at that radius. I, I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna try to move it uh, that small amount. Okay, so uh, tram is good. Um, oop, wrong way. Let's uh, move on to the next thing. All right, let's wipe the top of this off. So this is the uh, the way oiler here, and it's just a little manual pump on this particular machine. And you can see that, uh, you know, it pumps, whoops, clear that out of the way, pumps stuff up. Um, this does not need to be filled. I filled it recently. But this is something that you should be doing, uh, you know, pretty much every time that you use the machine is giving it a pump. You know, I usually give it a, a, enough pumps that I see it come out. Um, there it goes. It's coming out up here. Uh, up on the up on the way that way you know the pump is primed and uh, it's going somewhere uh, the fact that you see it coming out <laughs> uh, means that it's doing its job okay so uh, um, and I use uh, mobile Vactra number two um, which is uh, you know it's a pretty common uh, way lube um, it's good for it's good for all kinds of stuff actually so uh, um, you can use it in, in many places uh, uh, to lubricate things. It's a, it's a good heavy gear oil with uh, stickifiers in it that make it stick to uh, um, vertical surfaces. So Okay, so give that a couple of pumps. That's always a good idea. All right, so we got a couple of lube points up here. We got this one here and we got this one here. They're distinctly different. Uh, um, uh, areas uh, on the machine. Um, this one here um, basically uh, needs a very lightweight lube, um, spindle oil or ten weight or machine oil, something like that. Uh, what this does is this lubricate, it doesn't lubricate the spindle bearings, but it lubricates the quill. And uh, so that oil, there's a little wick and it, it comes down and gets on the, uh, on the quill surface here, okay? So what we want is we want a, a real light viscosity lube for that and I use a 10 weight uh, spindle oil and we're just gonna put a few drops in there and this is a, this is a regular item here too um, I fill the cup and um, um, so it wicks and gets on the spindle and and basically keeps stuff coming out of there so uh, and it also lubricates that little sliding shield that's uh, that's inside the quill now you guys have noticed I use the quill a lot um, so I'm uh, you know I'm pretty fussy about how that behaves and because um, um, I use the quill a lot hello yeah okay and the other one back here this is the gears uh, for the um, uh, the power feed which you engage here um, so this lubricates some gears that are in there, and uh, now I'm probably going to get flamed on the uh, on the web, but uh, I use uh, I use Waylube, um, and the reason is it's oops I got to take the cap off here. It's sticky. It sticks to the gears, um, and it's a good lube. Okay, so uh, um, it's light enough that it gets in there, and um, there we go. Here we fill that up, little cup up every once in a while and um, so you know I've talked to enough machine maintenance guys and uh, um, you know obviously follow your manufacturer's instructions that's the uh, disclaimer uh, I use Waylube it works fine um, and <laughs> I've uh, um, used a lot of mills so uh, flame on 
All right, there's a couple more uh, lubrication points on the uh, on the head here, and uh, they're zerk fittings. So these take grease here and uh, kind of wipe off the uh, dried spooge on there. And then we're going to give these a couple of pumps. And this is just uh, general purpose grease, lithium grease going in here. Give it a... Okay. Get on that one here. My little baby grease gun here. So I just give it kind of three pumps. So some goes in there. And then there's one more down at the bottom and we'll go down to that one. And that's the, uh, the elevation screw. And uh, we'll get some, uh, um, some grease on that little guy too. So let's cruise down there and check that out. All right, well, this is a pretty important one. Um, actually, this is probably the one that really uh, sees a lot of use there. Give that a good shot. Um, actually, let me uh, come down. Give it another one. This one, uh, you know. It's one of those ones you can, you probably can't over lube, right? And then I usually just cover up the tip of my uh, grease gun with some foil to keep dirt from collecting on the end of it and uh, whatnot. Okay. All right. So we're going to reinstall the vise, um, and what I want to do is I want to put um, a little bit of luber, a little bit of uh, rust preventative uh, underneath the vise. Just kind of a really thin molecular film on that. You know, I don't want to like grease the heck out of it, but uh, um, I, w I want something there. And what I've been using actually is this uh, this frog lube CLP. Um, a viewer sent me this. I love the smell of it, and it really seems to work really well because uh, you can wipe it off and. Um, um, and it cleans up real well and all that and it seems to uh, it seems to do the job okay and we're just gonna put you know a faint a faint coating on there okay where the vise sits and this will uh, let me get a little more there some on my finger there you know just enough to give it a sheen right all right and uh, and then we'll put the vise on top of that, and um, we won't get any uh, rusty crusties under there. Anyway, that's this uh, um, frog uh, lube CLP. Is it? Uh, is there a website on here? All natural, non toxic, environmentally green. Yada yada yada. Uh, made in the USA, right on. Okay. And. Well, come on, where's the damn website, guys? Disabled veteran owned business. All right, well, I don't have a website here, so uh, um, I can't believe that these guys haven't didn't put their website address on here. Okay, anyway, frog lube. Vice going back on. Okay, so the same kind of uh, care that we use on the mill table, uh, we want to do to the bottom of the vise as well. I'm just giving it a, a bath in some liquid love, otherwise known as WD-40. Okay, and then we're just gonna, we're just gonna go over it and, uh, and fish around and, and look for any dingus McGee's there. <laughs> feeling anything you know, your sense of feel is uh, uh, kind of uh, you know you'll feel a, the stone drag a little bit and then you can then you can identify a spot and take a closer look at it okay Oop, geez. There. 
it fell right under the tripod of the camera. So if I, I grab it, I'm gonna, I'm gonna boink the, uh, the camera and disturb your viewing pleasure. Okay, that looks pretty good. And you run your hand over it, make sure there's no, uh, you know, nothing comes off, no uh, little whiskers or anything like that. Okay, and then, uh, so I'm not going to lay this on any surface now. The next surface that this is going to touch is the, uh, uh, the table on the mill. So it's just going to go right on there. Okay, let me, uh, let me huff that thing over there. Okay, so you'll notice that I've lowered the table and brought it out to the front in preparation for uh, putting Mr. Kurt back on there. All right. Now, I don't know, maybe I should talk about this. The, uh, um, you know, there's, there's a lot of uh, discussion, <laughs> I would call it, on the web about keeping your vice in the middle or moving it off to the sides. Um, you know, if, if you're using your milling machine eight hours a day, um, 40 hours a week. Yeah, I'm going to suggest that you uh, that you move the vise around. Uh, honestly, it's probably going to be moving around anyway if you're working that much. Remember that these are industrial machines designed to be used, you know, in a production, uh, you know, daily use environment, right? Most of us hobby guys, so we put a couple hours on them a week, something like that. Okay. Um, it's going to take you a lifetime to uh, to wear a hollow uh, uh, by keeping your vise in the uh, in the middle of the table. Okay, these have the huge bearing areas, uh, and if you keep them well lubricated and clean, you know your grant should will get the mill and it'll be in fine shape. Okay, so that's Tom's two cents worth on that. If you are a production shop and you use your bridge ports uh, day in and day out. The vice is going to be coming on and off of there all the time, and uh, and you're going to be having uh, indexers on there, rotary tables, um, all kind, all manner of uh, things, and large parts are going to go on there. You're going to be shuttling the table back and forth. Uh, it's a non-issue. Uh, you're going to be moving it around plenty. Um, so uh, um, that's Tom's two cents worth on that. Okay. So I keep mine in the center because I don't use my mill in a production environment. Okay. Um, let me pull those off. So here's my uh, my T nuts, and you'll notice I use uh, I use uh, bolts. So I don't like the uh, um, I like the top of this to be smooth, um, in as opposed to having a stud. And, uh, and nut sticking up. So I trade these out for, uh, um, for cap screws uh, for that reason. And I, oh, I got uh, thick, you see those are 3 16 thick hardened washers there. And this, this, I buy an extra set of, of T nuts or make them, and those just stay with the vise. That way I'm not using two out of my, uh, uh, my, my strapping kit and uh, you know borrowing those uh, back and forth all the time so uh, it's just kind of dedicated all right all right so you guys have seen my video on uh, on vice tramming all right and that's what we're going to do kind of lock one side down and then uh, we'll get a parallel on the indicator and we'll indicate that all right so we're going to indicate the uh, the vice now couple ways you can do this. Um, these are actually, these jaws are in real good shape here. Uh, they've been reground in there, so they're nice and straight. They're not uh, all beat up. But if you have, if your jaws are a little bit wonky, um, maybe you don't have a surface grinder and, you, and, uh, or, and your jaws are a little bit worn, one thing you can do is, if you have a nice parallel or, or a nice thick parallel, ideally, right? You can plop a parallel in there, okay? And what it does is it kind of um, helps average all the, the wonky bumps and lumps and, uh, and craters. Come on, get it straight there, Mr. Wizard. Uh, that's close enough. 
All right, it kind of uh, averages all the the uh, the garbage there. Um, and then I uh, kind of generally prefer a uh, a, st a a stiffer setup on the uh, on the indicator, which means short typically. All right, let me uh, make sure. You know what? I need to go down a little bit. There we go. That'll work. All right. All right, so this is a nice, uh, nice little stiff setup there. There we go. Okay, so this is my fixed end over here. Um, so we'll just cruise down there and see what it looks like. I'm not touching right now, so don't worry. <laughs> All right, let's see what we got here. Let me get my uh, my instrument of adjustment. <laughs> All right, so we're gonna come up and we're just gonna we're gonna zero up. Okay. And remember, we're just going to uh, move this in the... Yeah, pretty good, Mr. Wizard. Now, I, I just put it up there... Oops, wrong way. So, you move... We, we had a zero here, so we're moving down here, and basically you're trying to null the indicator, okay? That's the... Uh, that's the... Uh, All right, so I don't know, plus a couple of tenths, plus a half. A... So there's some waviness in the. Oh yeah, oh, that's interesting. Maybe that parallel is not very straight, huh? Because it kind of dives at the last bit there. Huh. We'll try. We'll try a different parallel. Yeah, there's some, uh, some, uh, it's actually pretty good now. So it's maintaining, maintaining, maintaining. Now it's falling off. So you know what? I think my interpretation of that is, is this parallel is not very good. <laughs> let me get a, let me get a better one and we'll, uh, we'll try that again. Or a different one. Let me get a different one. Okay, so I got another parallel here. And so this is a, it's actually a granite parallel. I've been wanting to try this um, for this kind of a thing to see how it, uh, how it behaves. It should be nice and smooth and, uh, and pretty, pretty good. So let's see, oop, see what we get there. Just gonna lightly clamp this here. All right, gonna bring this up, touch off. Oops. Big clumsy move. You know, and there's some there's always a little bit of hysteresis and and there we go. Alright, let's see what we get here. Half one. Half a thou total now. Dare I bump it? Oop. Right, let's try that. I might do this bar right there. Alright, that's pretty damn good. Now, the hard part. Let's, uh, Snug this down a little bit. Now, the you know when you tighten the uh, when you tighten the bolts, really what's going on is you know you're pulling the vise down, 
but the other thing that's happening is you're is you're pulling you're pulling the whole table toward yourself, right? So you got to remember <clears throat> that the mill's got to kind of get back. You know, this axe has you know it has a little bit of uh, of movement to it. Okay, so you got to get back on its uh, its favorable. Uh, oh yeah, there you go. It's all right. That's pretty good. So that other parallel was a little bit, uh, a little bumpy. Um, you know, it's a, what do we call it? A import. <laughs> All right. So this is a, uh, a Standridge uh, granite parallel that I bought uh, uh, to play around with too. So um, that was pretty nice. All right. The last thing uh, that we're going to do here is I'm just going to reestablish my absolute zero here, which is this, this back jaw here and this little fold down stop and then um, by retaining that I uh, you know I don't have to edge fine all the time so what we'll do is I, I like to basically clamp something in the vise that's kind of mimicking um, um, mimicking a, uh, a part right you know uh, something that's good and I have this uh, this is a tool lot that I got on on eBay uh, and this is a, a block made by a guy named Gary Warner um, who was a tool maker that was actually uh, inadvertently killed uh, um, in a just a tragic accident involving some automobiles uh, I think it fell off a jack stand or something and, and killed him uh, at work so it's just a terrible story Anyway, uh, uh, some of his stuff ended up on eBay, and uh, so we'll honor Gary by using his block as our, uh, as our kind of measuring standard there, okay? Uh, and I checked these blocks, they're, they're, uh, they're really nice, he did a good job on them, um, and uh, one of the things I really like about this is, you see he put his name in at an angle, that is just so anti-toolmaker, right? Um, normally, uh, your, your run-of-the-mill tool maker would put that in, you know, frickin' dead center on the, um, the two by the three. This guy says, hey, what the hell, let's put it, uh, let's slash it on there at an, at an angle, right? And I just, I just love that personal flair uh, of Mr. Mourner there uh, to put that at an angle. It's just, it just flies in the face of, uh, of, uh, of tool making. <laughs> All right, let's see. Did I jump out of the frame there? All right, no, we'll, we're good. All right, so we got our Super Jump Edge Finder, 1400 RPM. Let's pick up a corner. Okay. All right, and we'll double check that. Okay. Do it a couple times. And looks good. We got a consistent result. Now I'm going to dial in the offset for the uh, edge finder. Okay, and now I'm, this is an absolute edge now. All right, so let's go over here. Sure, yeah, I'm over it. And then we'll do the same on the Y. Y, Y, Y. Pink. Okay. Let's give it a rough zero to start with. At least do it twice. Uh, you know, when you're doing uh, one that you're going to try to retain for a while. Uh, got a different result there. First one was no good. Huh. The DRO saying uh, okay. All right, so we got a good absolute now. 
Okay, and that's uh, that's the super jump there. Yeah, you find these on uh, um, eBay once in a while. Uh, Herman Schmidt used to sell these. Not anymore. Um, what's the name of those guys? Dang. Um, Uh, there's a, there's an outfit that still sells them, so you you can find them online. Uh, these are these are really nice. They have a large a large uh, bearing surface there, and then still have a small shank. Uh, standard uh, two hundred thousandths uh, tip on those. I re I've been using those a million years, and I, I love them. So, all right. So now we get to, you know most of the uh, the mill mechanical stuff uh, taken care of. Um, the next thing is. We're gonna we'll clean the collets, and it's it's a good good idea to clean them once in a while. Here's a here's a great example. Here's one I don't use very often, and it gets a, um, a film on it, and there, or oil from your hand or whatever, and you, and you put it away, and it kind of dries on there, and uh, this kind of degrades their accuracy a little bit. Um, the other thing is a lot of guys forget about it is every once in a while is. Put a drop of oil on the uh, um, on the end of the draw bar there. Okay. Now a lot of you guys with power draw bars, it's particularly important because um, you know you're powering that thing in and out of there. Okay. Um, and also you don't have access to it because your your power draw bar is on there. So that's something that should be lubricated um, you know, regularly. And then uh, what we'll do is we'll. We're just going to chase the threads in the. Uh, put it on slow there, Mr. Wizard. We'll just chase the threads and all the collets too, just for good measure. Just you know, this makes your life easier when you're uh, you're going in and out of the uh, you're going in and out of the machine there. Uh, you're, you know, you're trying to move. And I got the clutch set, so you know, if it grabs, it's not going to. It's not going to pull hard on it. And, uh, you know, I keep, uh, I only keep the collets that I use regularly up there. You know, I have a full set, but uh, so I don't have to, uh, um, you know, <laughs> fish through them to find the one I want. I only have the ones that I use all the time. And then if I need a, you know, 13 16 collet or whatever, some goofy size, then uh, I just go, I go get it. But that's not a uh, a regular a regular item. All right, so let me finish this, and uh, we'll uh, well then we'll take the collets over to the lathe, and we're going to clean them up over on the lathe. Okay. All right, so what I have in here, I didn't have a um, um, a fine thread seven sixteenths bolt, so this is a uh, my. I have a second draw bar that uh, for the mill, and I just put it in this smaller chuck. So I'm just going to put these little guys on here like this and thread them down until they kind of stop. And, um, oops, you know what? I forgot to cut the dang. Uh, uh, we're just going to use a little bit of Scotch Brite on this uh, just to clean the, the, uh, the scunge off of these things. Let's see how fast we go. So, you know, we want to get these mating surfaces here, and then this reference surface back here, the rest of that's all kind of clearance, clearance, clearance. So, and this just makes them feel real silky when they go in there. And then you know I'll clean them a little bit better too. I'll give them a, oops, I'll give them a little uh, a little a little bath. All right, and um, yeah, that feels much better. And then I'll, I'll scrape out the keyway here too a little bit. Sometimes they get uh, it gets spooge in there. Yeah, see, a little bit of little bit of weasel snot in there. Okay. All right, and then uh, I'll go back through and I'll clean these slots um, um, with a paper towel or something like that in between there. All right, so rinse and repeat.